NATO appears to be determined to carry out the murder of Muammar Gaddafi. What will that impact if, in fact, it occurs? What is that impact on Libya, on the region, and the upcoming presidential election, specifically the re-election of President Obama? You know, I had something in my talk that I don't know whether I mentioned it. It's about Brother Barack. And uh, this is what I said. I said, dear brother, be careful about the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi and others in the Muslim world. Could it be that while you and your staff are planning the death of Muammar Gaddafi? Could it also be that members of your own Democratic Party are plotting to betray you? Could it be that right now, while you are planning for your second term, that there are those in your party want you for a second term, and definitely the Republicans want you to be a one-term president? So like Abraham Lincoln, who was prosecuting the Civil War and doubted that he would be reelected, won a second term. But this so angered the opposition that it was then that his own reelection inspired his assassination. Could that be going on right now under your own nose? Think, dear brother, before you act. Because as the Bible puts it, God is not mocked. As a man soweth, the same shall he also reap. And as Obadiah the prophet said, as thou hast done, so shall it be done unto you. If they're successful in killing Brother Gaddafi, this is not going to be the end. This is the beginning of horrors, as you will see. Gaddafi wasn't in some tent twiddling his thumbs. He was working for the good of the African people. The African people will rise. NATO, and I'm sorry, America, I would, I've got to say it, you know, because I heard it from the mouth of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. <clears throat> Europe is finished. All of you that love war, you'll be drowned in your own blood. As it is written, those of you who love to shed the blood of others, Allah will make you drunk with your own blood as with sweet wine. Europe is headed for war as we speak. Yes, England, France, Italy, Germany. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me that at the right time to tell you that Europe is the graveyard of the future. And all of you that ran to Europe to your former colonial masters, it is written that everyone will have to go to their own and find refuge under their own vine and fig tree. And as Europe is trying to push out the African, push out the Pakistanis, you would be wise to prepare yourself to get out of there or die there because the future for Europe and America is bleak, very, very bleak. China and Russia, oh, you all will be in war. You like it, so Allah is going to give it to you. You'll have war soon. Mark my words, not my words, the words of a man who was taught by God, and you will face every word that he spoke, and you remember what you heard today, that a man, a real man of God, was in your midst, and every word that I speak, you will face it. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Masood Heather. I represent Daily Dawn of Pakistan. Minister, I'd like to know, since you have issued a all virtual indictment of United Nations, and also uh, you have suggested that there could be a way to stop the NATO attacks into uh, Libya, what is it that you envision? In place of United Nations, what is it that can be created that can replace it? Are you a Muslim? And 
What? Yes, Are sir. you a Muslim? Yes, sir. Good. And, well, the good. Other, yes. and the other thing I want to know, why, how do you uh, envision that there could be another resolution that can be brought about and stop this war in Libya? Well, I'm not familiar with all your twists and turns of the United Nations, but Russia and China have great strength. And they could bring this thing back before the United Nations and argue that NATO and America have exceeded what UN Resolution 1973 authorized them to do and take another vote and stop this. They could do that. Now, what will replace the United Nations? This is a sham. So I ask you a question if you believe in Allah, if you're a Muslim, because it's written that Allah himself is going to set up a kingdom on this earth of peace and justice. So all this happening is to remove all of this fictitious dream of a few that rule the many, that they will continue their rule, their time is up. I'll say it again loud and clear. Your time to rule is up and your rule will end in war and America's power will be broken in war. These are the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that I stood with to speak. Now mark those words down and watch. I've given you tomorrow's headlines today. Yes, Brother Minister, my yes. name is Dashan Farad. I represent the Amsterdam News. Uh, I would like to know, do you feel that President Obama is being motivated by unseen forces to attack Libya? There is no doubt. When Brother Gaddafi went into office, look at the sweetness of that man in his heart. Everybody that wanted change in America just about fell in love with this man. And that is what he actually wanted to do. But look who he's surrounded with. He brought around him in economics the crowd from Goldman Sachs. What does that mean? He's not an economist. He's a lawyer by profession. So he trusted economists and they, uh, I would say they persuaded him to get a bailout. Did the bailout bail us out, or it, did it bail out Wall Street? See? So no, he's surrounded by the people that are Zionist controlled, or Zionists. In fact, when he was elected, a Jewish man in Chicago said that as Clinton was the first black president, Obama is the first Jewish president. Now you can take it or leave it. He was not elected to serve a black agenda or to do good for us. He was served, he was voted in to be the black face on a white agenda. And he's not escaping it. He's caught up in it and will pay the consequences for it. Thank you. Take two more questions. Thank you for taking the time to record U.S. crimes. Uh, my name is Sarah Flounders from the International Action Center. And if you could uh, please comment uh, more on the role of AFRICON in really the recolonization and plans for new wars in Africa. I guess just as America planted Israel, in the Middle East, and there has not been any peace in the Middle East ever since Israel was established. Now she's planting AFRICOM in Africa, not for the purpose of helping Africa. See, the enemy always comes in with so-called good intentions. That's how he deceives you. He speaks the right word, but his actions do not follow the good that's in his words. And AFRICOM is definitely a plant in Africa using a black face to start this, to make it acceptable. This is why they use Colin Powell to say to the UN that um, uh, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. They use a black man that had a good track record. 
so you could trust his word. But he set the CIA behind him because he was not sure that their intelligence was right. And America, instead of following truth and making policy according to truth, she twisted the truth to follow her policy. And so, uh, my dear um, young lady, um, uh, I don't see, I really don't see um, the United Nations being able to settle anything because now the whole world sees her for what she really is. And imagine all the little nations looking at her, seeing what she's doing. Now some are going to cow down in fear because America and Europe's powers are so great, they fear that they can be wiped out like they feel Brother Gaddafi is going to be wiped out. Suppose he survives. I mean, look, it's going 90 days now. He survived. I saw him playing chess. They said, I don't know if that's an old picture. It's a new picture. Well, see, I mentioned the chess board. Suppose he survives. What then? What about the future of Europe and its dependence on that crude oil? Will he sell it to them? He got, the, he got a good heart. Really. I sat with my brother some years ago. And I said, Brother Gaddafi, do not trust these people. I said, they want to get close to you to destroy your revolution and to destroy you. He patted me on my thigh, never said a word. But I said, I'm warning you, brother, this is their intention. When he opened the door, they came in, and they came in to destroy him. And since you're from Pakistan, brother, you know, the West is very afraid of Pakistan's nuclear capability. They love a weak man in power. Nawaz Sharif, who was elected by the people, was a stronger man. And he was overthrown. And Musharraf was brought in. And Musharraf appeared to be too strong too. So you have who you have. And you have what you have. So Pakistan better rise up and remember that this is not your friend. They're not a friend of Islam. And any pretext that will give them the chance to go in and try to take all your nuclear capabilities, this is what they're after. And they only need any pretext. And so be careful, Pakistan. You're a great nation. But remember, Satan is always busy seducing the righteous. I hope I helped in answering your question. Two more, and that's it. Yours and the next one. That's the last one. Oh, this is the last one. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Minister uh, Muhammad. Uh, my name is Donald Wingfellow with the Black Star News. Uh, you already have given uh, Obama uh, not to, to not to go into uh, Libya, and they went in anyway. What should the uh, African people be doing today, right now? to stand up in the streets to stop uh, this White House to cease and desist from going any further attacks into uh, Libya. Thank you. Since we're coming up on a new election season and my sister is organizing a huge rally in Harlem. See, we have to stir African people and they have to know what is going on that is damaging to African interests. And if we rise as a people, particularly in an election season, and let our brother know you can't count on our vote if this is what you're going to do, we put you in power to be a good man. And you have allowed these satanic minds to hook you in. So the book of Revelation said he's like a frog in the mouth of a dragon. You hear the a frog, beep, 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 but it ain't the frog, it's the dragon talking through the frog. He's not in power. He acts in power, but the powers are behind him, and you ought to know it. Any black man that 
stands up for white concerns, is backed by powers that you don't see, but he feels it. And that's why he acts and reacts the way he does. You better wake up, black people, and not be deceived by the fact that a black man is in the White House. It's great that he's there if what he does there helps us all. Now he's done something for gays. He's done something for unions. He's done something for this one, something for that one. Let's see what he does for black people and for Africa. Not sending Hillary Clinton to Addis Ababa to tell Africans what to do. The nerve of her. And believe me, if she sent... Well, he, he may have okayed it, but who sent her? Y'all better wake up. Thank you. Thank you very much. As-salamu alaykum.